this is the Provoke Prawn, here to compare two fantastic USB microphones, the HyperX Quadcast S and the Beacon Mic. Now these are two quite different microphones with different appeal, and I want to talk to you about why they're wonderful and why I think they're worth considering, and talk about the features and highlights of each and what I like and don't like about them. They're both brilliant microphones with their own reasons for purchasing. So I want to cover those. And the Beaker Mic, for example, is not only a great looking microphone, but also delivers fantastic audio out of the box and has software that makes it fully customizable. You can also buy the Beacon Mix Create Tools, which is an audio interface that lets you set up virtual audio channels that you can adjust on the fly, so you can set volumes that you can audience can hear and you can hear, and you can mute them manually and adjust between them and change different levels for each and all sorts of things wonderful bit of kit though an additional purchase whereas the HyperX Quadcast S is more plug and play less fuss perhaps out of the box and has a lot of hardware features going for it you'll see that it comes with a mic stand for example which the beacon mic does not it also has RGB lighting, which makes it really stand out if you're a streamer and you want that visual appeal on your screen. It has a built-in pop filter and also a very nice shock mount. Now, the HyperX Quadcast, I'm going to kickstart off by talking about that in a little bit more depth. One of the other things that this microphone has as a condenser microphone is it has multiple different polar patterns, which allows you to use it in different ways. So you have the usual cardioid pickup pattern, which sees you talking into the front of it, but you can also set it into stereo mode and other modes where you can have, for example, people sitting around the microphone talking into it, or if you're using it to capture instruments, then you can do that. So it's a great mic and very versatile. It also has some really nice controls with a very soft touch game wheel on the underside, as well as a tap to mute button on top, which I'll show you later on. It has a USB-C connection and a 3.5mm connection for mic monitoring, which means it's really easy to set up. I've done a detailed video on how to make this mic sound great that I recommend checking out. I'll link to that in the description. And I'll show you all the different things that you can do to make it sound good. But even out of the box, it sounds pretty fantastic and it looks really good too. Now it comes with a mic stand, but it also comes with an adapter so you can put it on a boom arm. And I would highly recommend doing that because although you can put it on a mic stand, Obviously, it's not going to be very close to your mouth. It's potentially going to pick up noise from the surrounding environment. The shock mount does a pretty good job of eliminating noise from the desk, but it's still going to have some problems there. So I would recommend with both these microphones that you get a good quality boom arm to mount them on. But the Quadcast S has a little adapter included in the box that you can basically put on yourself with relative ease, although take care to not to lose any of the parts while doing it if you're going to switch between these modes because otherwise you will have problems. And once you've done that, you can then mount it onto the boom arm. Now, as I said, with that polar pattern, you can choose different ways to address the microphone and also how you're going to use it. So there are other use cases. Obviously, I'm talking mostly for streamers and content creators here, capturing voiceovers, talking to an audience, but you could use it for capturing musical instruments or podcasting and other things as well. It's a great looking mic and it's really easy to mount on in most boom arms. You can see it here on the blue compass, for example. And once you've got it there, it's very visually appealing. A lot of hardware features you can see there. The beacon mic by comparison looks relatively sparse out of the box with a USB-C cable, 3.5 mm extension cable and an adapter. It is a dynamic microphone which looks fairly understated apart from that RGB ring. You'll see there's very little in the way of controls on it because it has a USB-C port and 3.5 mil, but there's no mute button, no volume controls. That's all done at software level and you are much better placed to use the Beacon Mix Crate or a similar tool to be able to adjust the volumes and things on the fly with it. Otherwise, you might have a bit of problem muting it, for example. Something simple like that is quite difficult. But it does have a very nifty setup about it. And one of the things that I was struck by was how easy it was to set up. Because obviously, same sort of logic. Plug a USB cable into it, plug it into your PC, and then you can start using it to record. But generally speaking, with most microphones you have to do some adjustment playing around with the settings to get it sounding good with the beacon microphone once you've got it plugged in download the beacon software and then it'll automatically apply a bunch of improvements to it and tweaks that you can do which i'll show you in a second noise gate compressor expander 
various different profiles that make it sound really good. But out of the box, as standard, it sounds pretty fantastic. You can also do other things to it so you can see that you can remove the windshield off of the top of there. You will notice, obviously, there's no shock mount. But I didn't find that that was a problem because it doesn't seem to pick up a lot of external noise if you do bump the desk and other things. You can easily adjust it on its mic arm on that stand as well. So you can reposition it as you want to on your boom arm. And in this case on the Rode PSA 1 Plus. But it is fairly easy to set up and to get into a good position. Now this is a dynamic microphone. So the different dynamic and condenser microphones. This one you talk straight into the top of. So it's a bit more restrictive. It doesn't pick up sound from around you. So you do need to get it onto a boom arm and close to your mouth as possible. And it probably wouldn't be as good for other things if you wanted instruments or whatever else. But for capturing audio, for voiceovers, and for streaming, it's fantastic. Plug a 3.5mm connection in there, and you can mic monitor easily as well, which is obviously another benefit. And this is the beaker mic, which I've been using through the entirety of the voiceover so far. And as you can hear, it's a fantastic sounding dynamic microphone with some nice style to it. Now, it is a dynamic microphone, which means you do need to talk into the top of it, as you can hear. And it does have some appeal in like the terms of the RGB lighting ring, for example, but otherwise it's fairly understated. Now, I've got the software open over here because that's one of the main highlights. One of the things that I found about this microphone is you can take it out of the box, plug the cable in, get the software going, and then immediately it already sounds great. But as you can see, you can see some pretty interesting stuff going on here because you've got the waveforms and other things. You can see where you're speaking into sort of the so you want to get into this green zone so you can adjust the gain on it for example to get into there and then your peaking area is what you want to avoid but you can also choose from a number of different things so there's different presets for example you can go between high and low broadcast quality you've got noise suppression so i've got that turned on for example as an expander a compressor you've got an exciter to change the quality of your voice you can throw in some extra bass if you want to, which is probably unnecessary. <laughs> um, make it really bassy. People are always saying I'm too bassy as it is, but you see I had mine turned to nothing. Um, you could tweak in there. But what I found was I didn't need to mess around with these a lot. Now, with a lot of other microphones, including the HyperX Quadcast S, you do need to do some tweaking in order to get it sounding good. And this tool lets you do more than your average USB microphone. You don't normally get to do things like a compressor and expander and noise suppression and exciters and stuff like that with the default sort of stuff that comes with the microphone. So you get a lot of customization. This sort of thing you usually only see with an XLR microphone, which is a lot more expensive. Those are the upsides. The downside is there's no mic mute button on here at all. There's no volume control, which you don't necessarily need to adjust because usually when you set it, you'd, that'd be what you use. But the fact you can't mute this at hardware level is frustrating on one hand. On the other hand, obviously, you don't really want to be touching your microphone anyway because you don't want to bump it. But you can also get the Mix Create, which then allows you to control various different things, including, for example, muting it. So you can see that just went red. When I press the mute button on there, that's now muted to the audience. This thing is very powerful, and I've done a video separately with the microphone and this to talk about all the different things that you can do with it, including not only the audio routing of various different channels, like music, game, Discord, mic, and other things, but also to have separate channels. So you can have one for the stream audience and then one for a VOD recording, which you can set up an OBS with two different uh, audio tracks so you can have two different separate audio tracks with different things recorded on them thanks to the software that comes with the beacon mix create tool so that's well worth considering buying alongside this mic which obviously makes it more expensive it's not necessary but it is if you want that extra control and the ability to easily mute it or control the volume of it and other things. So it's something to bear in mind, I think, because hardware level, it's not as good as the Quadcast S, but at software level, it's fantastic and it sounds really good too. One of the ways it sounds good is that sound elimination, so the noise elimination. So what I've been doing is obviously playing a lot of games as well and using the keyboard and then like gaming on it furiously. So this is my current keyboard. And 
this thing has linear switches on it, so they're fairly quiet. But what I found is that the microphone is not picking up that very much. And you can see in the waveforms that it is, but the levels suggest it's actually being eliminated. And that I haven't noticed it in the gameplay clips very much. So the noise suppression and other things, and the fact that it's dynamic, so the sounds going into the top isn't picked up from behind quite so much, means that the quality is really good there. It's helping to eliminate things like that. And I'm not noticing fan noise or traffic noise as much as I would with other microphones that aren't as forgiving. And this is the HyperX Quadcast S. Now I've put them obviously side by side so you can see the difference. Obviously the Heat Quadcast S is a bit more striking in terms of the RGB lighting. This is turned off for the moment so there's no problem with two mics at the same time. And they, this one is available in white by the way so you can get the same sort of color if you want to. Now the first things obviously beside the RGB the hardware controls, as I said. So I wanted to show the mute functionality because it's a very gentle touch up here. It's capacitive, so there's no button press. So you don't hear a clonk whenever it's muted. And the other thing you'll notice is that the RGB turns off. So the RGB is no longer on when it's muted. So you've got a really easy visual cue of that being off, which is nice. Now this is in the cardioid pickup pattern, so if I talk around in different directions you'll hear that you can't hear it as well, that's because you need to talk into the front. But you can obviously change that with that dial at the rear as I've shown you and go between those different modes, which means that you can get sound from around you. In this mode, obviously, it has the advantage of eliminating some other noises, so for example keyboard sounds. If you're typing behind the microphone, which is why you need to get it close to you and then turn the game down and it'll eliminate some of those problems and other things like noise from your PC. Now this microphone obviously doesn't have things like a compressor and a exciter and noise suppression as standard. You can get other apps to do that. For example, NVIDIA Broadcast, you can get a noise suppression in there and some background noise elimination. I've also done an in-depth video on how to make this microphone sound good, but it does sound good out the box, but you also need to think that you don't have as many software controls as you do with the Beacon microphone, which offers up loads of different controls as I've shown. This thing is more plug and play friendly. You just plug it into any device and start recording and you can capture audio from around different angles as I've shown and it obviously looks great on stream. And if you're just using it for recording purposes, for voiceovers and for other things, or for uncomplicated streams, it's fine. Whereas the Beacon microphone, if you want to go all in with uh, loads of complexity to your stream, loads of different virtual audio channels and controls over those, as well as all the EQ and profile changing that you can do as I've shown you, then that's obviously the better choice, especially if you buy it along with the Mix Create tools, which is obviously an extra expense. Now, this setup here, more expensive, especially when you throw that in, and obviously you need a boom arm. You can't just use the microphone on a mic stand as you could potentially use the Quadcast S. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. However, I do think both of them are fantastic microphones for the reason I've shown. This has been around for a while now, but it's still one of the ones I would recommend to most people as a easy to use, good sounding USB microphone that looks great and offers loads of features for the money. Don't forget to check out the reviews links in the description to find out more of both of these because I have gone into more depth on them and other things you might find useful too. So go check that out and thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.